What's up guys, this is Ben. Adobe came out with some big releases this week with their Adobe Max keynote online webinar. This was their big announcement of all of their new software updates, including a huge AI addition to Photoshop. I haven't gone into those too much yet, but what I did want to talk about was the new split toning in Adobe Lightroom. It's definitely not groundbreaking. It's basically copying what Premiere Pro has been doing with Lumetri Color for quite some time now, but it is nice to have this addition after quite some time of just using the hue and saturation in the shadows and the highlights. Now, a friend of mine told me that he finds the split toning scary. Sometimes I don't think he's all that smart, so that might just be him. But I do find that some people find split toning hard to understand or wrap their head around. But honestly, it's not really all that hard once you understand how it works. So here I have Adobe Lightroom 2020, not 2021 open. I'll get to the new update in a bit. Here is the timestamp of when that'll be. So if you're not interested in learning about the old split toning and how split toning works in general, you can skip forward to this time and learn about the new feature. But let's just talk about what split toning is first. Here I have a gradient from white to black. It doesn't look like it's a perfect gradient, but Photoshop tells me it was. I'm not gonna go into anything else other than split toning, so I'm just gonna hide all of these over here. Once you've imported your photos and you've done your, all your adjustments, split toning doesn't necessarily have to be the first or the last thing. It can kind of come in wherever you want. Personally, I use split toning mostly to adjust the colors of the final image, just to tweak them a little bit to what I had originally in mind, in case some of the shadows or the highlights were not quite as saturated in a certain way that I wanted. That doesn't have to be how everyone does it. You could just do a split toning edit and not worry about anything else and that could work for you. It all depends on the photo. As with using presets, there's not one specific way to do something. You'll always have something different going on in a photo. So there's not one copy and paste method for every single photo edit that you do. But let's just look into this. So here I have white and black and we can see that changing some of our basic exposure settings will change this gradient. I'm gonna reset everything back there and we'll just go into the old version of split toning. So here we have highlights, balance, and shadows. Highlights is obviously putting a color into the highlights. Saturation is how much of that color goes in. And then shadows, believe it or not, is how much color we wanted to put into the shadows. So we can see as we put the saturation up in the shadows, it comes more or less to the left side of this image. And then if we put the saturation up on the highlights, it comes more or less to the right side of this image. It, they kind of bleed in a little bit towards the center, but that's kind of how highlights and shadows work. They're not white and black, which are the far end of the spectrum. They're the highlights and the shadows, which kind of make up everything in between white and black. So then we also come to balance. So balance shows us how much we want to put that color in to either end. Let's go with the classic orange and teal look for a quick example here. I'm gonna put the saturation up to 100% on both, just so we can kind of see what this balance does. The balance slider basically controls how much of the highlight and the shadow colors that we're putting into this image. So at zero or halfway between this bar, we can see that there's both blue and orange in this photo. Now, if I slide the balance all the way to the bottom, you can see that the blue takes over and there's not really any orange left over. Now, if we bring it all the way up, same thing happens, the orange takes over and there's pretty much no blue left other than just a little bit, but that's because we have the saturation all the way up and I don't think this gradient is perfect, but this is basically how we control how much of each color that we're putting in. Now you might be wondering why I put orange and teal into these colors, and that's because those are complementary colors. Orange and teal has been a very popular one because putting orange in the highlights maintains a fairly consistent skin tone without making this adjustment look unnatural in the skin tones. If that's not something you're worried about, maybe you have an image with no people at all, maybe you're not worried about skin tones in your image, you don't really have to stick with orange and teal. Honestly, orange and teal has been used quite a lot in the past few years, so it's not always a bad thing to try and experiment and try new colors. 
Thankfully, Adobe has a web tool called Adobe Color, which you can find different complementary colors, whether that's two, three, four, or five different colors all in one color scheme. You can also browse color themes that other people have come up with. You can also upload an image and the tool will automatically find the main color scheme of that image if you wanted to copy that image. So if you're just getting started with split toning and you wanted to try and experiment but you're not sure what colors will work together, I would recommend going to check out Adobe Color. I'll throw a link in the description if you want to go and find that out. But for now I'm just going to stick with orange and teal. Since we have options to change the hue and saturation in both the highlights and the shadows, and the balance between those two, this gives you a lot of flexibility in changing the overall look and the colors of your image. Here's an image I shot of one of my friends. He was standing in front of a very, very bright blue LED wall, and I thought maybe I could copy one of those classic neon sign looks where the subject is standing right in front of a neon sign, but unfortunately it looked like it was blown out, there was too much blue, it didn't really look all that great. So I ended up using split toning and I was able to create this image. I did this by adding a lot of orange in the highlights and then I tried to take out certain colors by adding a complementary color in the shadows. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So let's try this out on a photo. Here I have a photo with a lot of dynamic range. There's a lot of shadows, there's a lot of highlights. But overall, it's a fairly good image. Now let's see what we can do with split toning. Some YouTubers might call this look somewhat cinematic. I don't really like throwing that word around, but I do think that this kind of look matches well with what a movie could look like. So I guess this could technically be considered cinematic. All I did here was add some blue in the highlights and some yellow in the shadows. And then I played around with the balance. This is what it looks like before and after. So basically for me, I use split toning as if it was like a LUT in a video. So while some parts of Lightroom are more for correcting an image, split toning, I would say, is more for tweaking the final look of an image. I don't really ever use this in a very technical way. Split toning for me has been more of a creative way to change the look of the photo. As we can see in this image, the final image doesn't really look very accurate compared to what the original image looks like. You don't always have to worry about making it look realistic or making it look exactly how you saw it in person. You can add whatever you think makes the image look better and makes it look more like what you had envisioned. So that's a quick look through split toning in the old version. Let's go ahead and update Lightroom and check out what this new split toning is all about. So I'm gonna update in three, two, one, and here we are. Welcome to Lightroom Classic. I'm using Lightroom Classic because that's what I prefer. If you're wondering what the differences are between Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC are, I have a full series on Lightroom coming up soon, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that series. But here we are introduced to the new and improved Lightroom Classic. We have this new welcome screen that shows the different new features. So now since Lightroom documents all of the edits that we do, it was able to look back into the old version of Lightroom and see the edits that I had done. And now if we come down to the color grading tab, which is the new name for split toning, we can see that I have the blue and the yellow already applied and we can disable that and see the edit that I had done before. The cinematic edit. This whole color grading tab looks completely different. Let's go back to our ugly gradient that we made and check that out. So here we can see the edits that we had done before. We can see that we have the blue and the yellow in our shadows and highlights, but now we see a mid-tones look. So if you wanna to upgrade to Lightroom and you don't want to use this new feature, you can replicate the old split toning in this new color grading by ignoring the mid-tones, setting blending all the way up to 100%, and then only using highlights and shadows. This will give you the same functions as you had from the old Lightroom. But now let's look into what is new. So instead of having a hue and saturation slider, hue and saturation wheel, along with a luminance slider. In the shadows, you can see that I'm lightening and darkening the shadows here, and we can disable that edit if we want to check it out by holding down on this little eye. Same goes for the highlights. 
And then if you look on the top here, we can see that there's two dots under the highlights and the shadows. And that basically just means that those two dots are active. Midtones is inactive right now because I haven't made any changes. So there's no dot underneath here. But if we want to go and see a little bit more detail, we can go from this three wheel to a single wheel. And now we get a bigger wheel that we can change around here. We can also click on this and then use some custom colors. You have to click and drag to use this eyedropper tools. But with this, you can open up any other image. And as you can see, as I move this eyedrop around, you can see that it's sampling whatever color of pixel is active underneath that. So right now I'm under blue because I'm highlighting the blue of the histogram here. Then I can go to red and blue, or I can sample from this image. Let's say I wanna use this orange here. You can also save your swatches. So, so if I wanna have super saturated bright green, I can go and right click on this and set this swatch to current color. So now I have that saved as a custom color. Next up we have our luminance, which is making it brighter or darker. And then if you really want, you can click on this little arrow and now you can change the hue and saturation from sliders instead of just the wheels. And then you can go through and do that for the shadows, midtones, and highlights as well. Then finally, we have a global wheel, which ignores the highlight, shadow, and midtones and just applies this to the whole image as a whole. So you can see that I'm changing the colors of the whole image. Obviously this is pure white, so there's not much hue to be able to change it because every color is maxed out right now. But then as we go down, we can see that more colors get changed as I change this around. And as always, we can click and hold on the eye to disable this. So Lumetri Color already has these three wheels, and that's a really easy way to color grade your footage. So Lightroom basically took that whole concept and applied it to Lightroom, and they even added a few extra features like the swatches, the global, and the blending and balance. Let's go ahead and reset our global tab and go to midtones and add some color in our midtones. So right now I have full blue, green, and red as my colors. While we're inside of these color wheels, one useful tip is using the shift and command or control keys. If I hold shift, you can see that there's a line that shows up and that locks me from only controlling the saturation. I can't move left and right to control the hue. And then if I hold down control or command, it does the same thing, but with hue and doesn't let me change the saturation. So if you're, if you're wanting to get a really specific color and doing some fine edits, then this will come in handy because then you don't have to worry about your mouse drifting to an area that you don't want. So that's basically the color wheels and the new luminance sliders for these wheels. Next up, we also see the new blending slider. According to Adobe, this slider adjusts the amount of overlap between the highlights and the shadows. But I do know that if we move it to 100, that gets rid of the midtone adjustments altogether. So we can see that Midtones is green right now, and there's no green whatsoever in the image right now. And then if I go zero blending, now I have a lot of green, blue, and red. So that'll help you add a little bit of extra colors here and there and control how much of which you wanna see, in addition to changing the amount of saturation of those colors. Then we see the familiar balance slider, which does the exact same thing, pushes the color edits to the lower or the higher end. Nothing changes there. So this new update really gives you a lot of flexibility to change your colors within your image. Just with this poor image of a gradient, I was able to make it look a little bit better with all these colors. And that's only with this image. There is so much more that you can do with this. And ultimately the best way to learn this tool is to use it. Don't feel afraid to use it like my friend and just try and play around with it. Try different colors, try different areas of the sliders, and also check out Adobe Color because that'll be able to help you kind of wrap your head around complementary colors if you need to do so as well. Because realistically, there's no right or wrong way to do this color grading. This is all up to you and it's all a creative choice. I hope you won't be as scared of using split toning and color grading now as much as my friend is. And I really hope this video helped you out 
If you liked it, drop a like. If you loved it, leave a subscribe. Hope to see you back soon for the full Lightroom tutorial. Catch you in the next one. Peace. I hope you really enjoyed, I hope you really, I hope this, I hope this, Brrr.